Hi and welcome back to this part 2 of our Sun tutorial. Uh, it's been a long time coming but it's been one of those tutorials where anything that can go wrong has and hopefully we've got it down this time. So rather than boring you with the details let's just get straight into it and in this lesson we're going to be taking our file from last time and we're going to be adding the fiery corona around the edges which if you've watched the video co-pilot tutorial you'll remember he used blank solids with a distorted clouds texture and we're going to do a very similar thing only we're going to be using planes and we're going to be using blenders clouds function and we're also going to show you how to use input masks and how to get those into the compositor and mix it all up nicely so it all works and obviously we're going to animate those textures to look like actual flames. So with that said, let's uh, drop out of our compositing view into the 3D view and I'll turn on my screen capture keys. Hit N, scroll up and start display. Close that down again. Okay, so th there we go. Now we are looking through our camera view at our sphere and we need to put in a series of planes to act as our textures and to do that first of all I'm going to reset the uh, 3D cursor to the center of the scene so to do that I'll just press shift s snap cursor to center ideal and now we can add our planes by going shift a add mesh plane you'll see it's dropped it on the grid and if we look in our toolbar on our object properties, we can just click align to view. Okay, so we've done that, so that's all fine. Let's move this plane up, scale it down a bit. About that looks good. We've got our edges of the plane are going into the sphere, which is what we want. And we've got a fairly nice height on the plane so we can get some motion and now we need to uh, duplicate this plane to create the edges and the gaps in the side so to do that I'm going to just make sure my object origin is rotating around the 3d cursor and it is but if not you just click that button choose 3d cursor for your pivot point and now we can press shift D and then immediately press R to rotate and we can rotate our duplicated plane into position. Press Shift D, press R. And then we want two more planes just to cover those gaps. So again, Shift D, rotate. One there. Shift D, rotate. And that's our five planes done. And now we want to separate the two angled planes into their own layer so we just select those by pressing shift and right mouse button so that both planes are selected press M and we'll move those to layer I think layer 11 it's called I don't know they're not numbered it's just that bottom layer and these three uh, we can see they're on layer 4 we want them on their own layer as well. So select all those, press M, and move them to the first bottom layer. So now you can see they're on the layers. If I press Shift and just select those two uh, layers, the, you can see our, layer, our planes are now on the screen. Okay, so now we need to texture them, and we're just going to use a simple clouds texture. So select the first one, Go to new materials, click add new, and we're going to rename it as Corona. And we don't need to mess around with the diffuse and intensity because everything's going to be uh, done by uh, textures. But I just do need to click shadeless, and I also need to tr tick transparency and drag this alpha value down to zero. And the reason for that will become apparent in the tech materials tab. Uh, no textures tab sorry okay so now we've done that that's all we need to do for the materials if we click on the little checkerboard tab that'll bring us into our materials and we need a new one there and we'll rename this as corona as well 
or corner, it doesn't really matter. We're going to keep the type as clouds, we're going to increase the depth to about 10, so we just drag that slider up, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that'll do. The size is fine, noise type, Blender original, that's all fine. If we scroll down to the influence, we need to check the alpha checkbox, and leave that at 1. It's important that you do that, otherwise your clouds texture won't be see-through. And if I tick the show alpha button, you can see now the checkerboard behind the clouds texture. But now we're going to do something a little bit different to what we did to the sphere object. And we're going to actually colorize this texture in the materials tab. If you remember the uh, our previous tutorial, we did all our colorization within the compositor. But we need an, a nice gradient for our flame this time so I'm going to uh, tick the ramp and I'm going to use this ramp to create the flame colors. So I'm going to start with white and I'm going to click the little plus icon and that gives me a 50% grey and 50% alpha. I'm going to drag the alpha up, make it a bit brighter and drag it into the yellow. I want it more yellow than that. It's a bit too bright about there. Okay, that looks that looks good. I'm going to drag it further towards the white there. I'm going to add a second handle and increase the alpha. And now I'm going to drag it slightly more into the browns and oranges. I still want it fairly bright, so let's increase that value. It's not looking too good yet. Let's have a look at that. Uh, that's looking better. But let's drag it up again. There we go, that's looking nicer. And again, one more handle in the middle. Drag the value up to one, bring it down into the ori more orange. Have a look at that, yep. Looking not too bad. Okay, one more handle. We drag that down a bit darker into the ready more red browns not too bad i think we could do with a little bit more orange on this one i'm going to drag it about there and put the color up slightly let's have a look at that yeah that's looking a bit better and now i'm going to drag the alpha slider the very first one i'm going to drag it up a little bit higher and then make these a bit more compact together yeah okay i'm liking that that looks that looks okay okay so that's so far so good now we have that applied to our first texture but we need to apply it to each of the textures in turn so we'll just choose the corona texture for each object okay so now that each of them now have their own no, they, each of them are sharing the corona texture and you can see that by the number 5 in the uh, materials name. That means that 5 objects are using the same material. But we need to animate this material now in the same way we did before using the XYZ offsets. And in order to do that for each plane we need to make each texture an individual thing. But before we do that we need to make sure all our scaling and rotations are reset to zero value because currently if you remember it started out as a plane flat along the grid and we rotated it to be in the camera view so that means that the z direction is now pointing towards the camera instead of the y direction and also the scale is off and we can check that if we press the n key and just scroll up, you can see the scale is at 6.8, is at 0.682, and the rotations are at 90 degrees, 89 degrees, and the location. It's basically all messed up. And we need to fix that before we start messing about with our textures, otherwise, it's going to animate all wrong and it's going to be a nightmare. So let's do that very quickly, and we simply select the plane, press Ctrl A and we get the apply menu and we want to apply the rotation and scale we want to do that for each plane so Control A 
rotation and scale, control A, rotation and scale, control A, rotation and scale, and finally control A, rotation and scale. So now everything is reset to zero, the scale is at one, and that means the X direction is now upwards as it should be, and the Y direction is the forwards and backwards to the camera view. Okay, so with that said, let's take our first material here, click on the materials properties, and we'll make this its own material by clicking the five button. And now it's renamed it to Corona 001. And in our materials, we can now animate the offset. So we're making sure we're on frame one, and we have our little graph editor open. I'm going to insert the keyframe there, press I, jump to the end frame, change the X direction to one, press enter, and then press I again. And now we should have a moving offset for our texture. So let's just check that. I'm going to look in my graph editor and you see these little circles on the handles. That means we're using Bezier handles and we don't want that because it gives us an ease in, ease out by default. And we want it to be linear as, it's, as the object would have been moving constantly throughout its lifetime. We don't need any speed up and slow down. So I simply press T over the graph and set keyframe interpolation to linear. And you see those little circles have disappeared now and we have a straight linear progression between our frames. So now if I look over here, keep an eye on this uh, texture. If I jump to frame one and if I slowly go through, you can see the texture is moving and it's moving in the correct direction. So I can jump back to the first frame, select the opposite plane. I'm going to change the material. I'm going to click the number four because we have four objects now only using this material. Click four, we ha it's renamed it to Corona 2 And I do the same with the mapping. Press I to insert the keyframe, jump to the end frame, and this time we want it to go in the opposite direction. So on the X, I'm going to type in negative one, and that will give it movement along the other direction. So I just hit I to insert the keyframe. In my graph editor, press T, choose linear, and if we just watch the uh, screen there, as we go through, we can see it's moving nicely in that correct direction. Okay, so let's do the top one. Choose materials, click the little number, choose the textures, and this time we want the flame to go straight up. So it's the Z axis that we're animating. So hit I on the zero, jump to the end frame, change that to one, press enter and I. Go back to the start frame, keep an eye on this texture. In the graph editor, don't forget to press T, change it to linear. Now in the in the timeline, just scroll forward, keeping an eye on this. And we seem to be moving in the wrong kind of direction. The texture is coming forwards rather than going up, and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? I need to check that properly to see if it's just the viewport that's going wrong. And to do that, I'm going to select that layer, go into my render layers passes, press the plus button, create the new render layer, double click it to rename. I'm going to call it Corona 1 because we have two Corona layers. Uh, I'm going to click on the layer and under render settings, I'm going to uncheck the compositing layer. So only the screen will animate. And I'm going to render out a few frames just to make sure we're getting the right movement. And I'm only going to do 100 frames. It's going to be quite quick, but I'll stop the recording briefly and let that happen. So one moment. Okay, so that's done. Let's take a look at the uh, rendering. Just go to render, play rendered animation. 
and there you can see the problem we've got it going in the wrong direction so that's easy, easy enough to fix that's a good job we checked but you'll also realize that it's different to what we're seeing in the thing so yeah that's all fine so if I jump to the last frame where our keyframe is if on my top row of numbers on my keyboard I go to the minus button if I just click that and press I now this doesn't work with the minus button on the number pad that will adjust your screen um, text size if I just show you what I mean see how it's shrinking away getting really really tiny that's your number number pad minus if you press plus you can make this bigger see how uh, it's really really quite large so that's just a little tip for you there plus and minus on the number pad adjusts the size of the font the text uh, I think that's about the right size so yeah keyboard minus button and we we set the keyframe yeah okay so now it should be going in the right direction so that's those guys fixed now if I select the two on the outer side go to the first frame click the material and now I want it to go in the X direction but I also want it to go in the Z direction so it's going up slightly at an angle so on this one I just press I for the keyframes jump to the last less, uh, last level type in 1 on the X and negative 1 on the Z hit a keyframe in there and if I select this one now don't need to change the material number because it is the last one to have that material so we just go to the start frame press I to insert the keyframe last level now we need this to go in the opposite direction so press negative 1 and on the Z also negative 1 because we still want that one to go upwards and press I and obviously you can adjust these numbers slightly to get different effects well not effects but it'll move from a different point in its offset press T change those to linear just make sure those are all linear yeah we're all good okay so all our textures are done um, the next thing we need to do is set up our render layers again so we've got Corona 1 let's hit the plus button double click that choose Corona 2 make sure that layer is selected and in our scene let's just make sure all the layers are selected oops I need to press shift and select all the layers okay lovely so let's render those scene those layers out by going here and make sure on the shading we have our alpha at transparent you most likely find that it's, it's by default it's on sky so just change it to transparent that will benefit you later on okay but first let's render that scene just by hitting the single render button okay so let's have a look at our corona layers now you can see we have these horrible really sharp transitions on the edges and these intersections and we need to get rid of those otherwise it's not going to look very good at all and to do that we will simply create some layer masks so while we're here in the movie clip editor let's click on the view change it to mask the plus button where it says new create a new mask and we'll call this one corona 1 press enter for that and now we'll start off with the middle hold down control and just left click and start adding in the masks control C uh, no sorry alt C just to close that mask off press A to select all the handles and now we need to why 
Why is it changed to speckles? Corona 1, thank you. Now we need to press Alt S and that gives us our feather, which is what we need. And I'm just going to take these handles on the top section of the uh, mask feather and drag them up. And that will give us the height on our on our flame. Move these down slightly, fiddly sometimes, but that's okay. We want to make sure the feather doesn't come out of the edges of the scene because that'll just mess things up. We're trying to avoid these uh, sharp edges. Okay, so we've got our first mask. It's looking a little bit rough and ready, but we'll adjust that when we come to compositing. I want to hit my end to bring up my control panel and under mask layers I'm going to simply click the plus button create a new layer and now I'm going to add in the mask for this section so press control add my, start adding my handles alt C to close it up and now I'm going to press C to get my paint tool I'm just going to use that to select all the handles of that mask. Press Alt S and scale that out. If I press C again, select those handles that I don't need. Press Alt S and just smooth that out as well. Okay, and then bring these down a bit. Because I have a feeling they're too far. And then just move the green feather out a bit more. There, that way, there we go. And now we just do one for the other side. Plus, mask layer 2, control, and just quickly draw in. Oops. It's a little bit weird looking. If I select that handle, press G, just drag it down there a bit, straighten it out. That'll do. Press C to paint select all the handles on that mask alt s to get the feather bring that out press c and middle mouse button to deselect all the internal handles and alt s just to bring that out a bit more and then just manually drag these out a little bit further that'll give us a nicer transition straighten it up a bit there we go okay so far so good but i don't want this bottom edge of the mask to be quite as far into the uh, scene as it, it currently is so i'm going to switch from corona one and select the base and you can see the bottom of our mask is a little bit too deep into the main base so if i just select these handles, press G, move them up a bit, deselect those, Making slight, slight, slight adjustments. Some of our masks are a bit wonky. Trying to straighten them out a bit. There we go, that's uh, not quite as weird. Let's move this one. Okay, that looks like it could work. Let's make sure we're going to be okay here. Ensure we're still within the confines of our um, plane. And we just trying to knock out these weird creases that we are developing. Okay, they look like they'll work somehow, kind of. Alright, so now we just need to do the same again for the others. It's exactly the same process. Hit the little plus button. Call this Corona 2. Choose the Corona 2 layer. And we'll just cut in the masks again exactly the same way. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, brilliant. So now we've got that done. 
let's jump into our node editor and we'll start compositing the whole thing together. Nodes and you'll see from our previous tutorial I've already uh, tidied up a little bit. It's exactly the same from where we left off. I have only put things in frames and closed down the nodes just to give us a little bit of room, a bit of space. And you'll notice now that we have the alpha background as transparent we're not seeing the glow that we put on with the glare nodes but don't worry about that we shall fix that that was one of the main problems in getting this tutorial out that bloody glare node but we're fixed now and let's move on so let's start with shift a add input render layers and I'm going to go full screen by control up arrow. I'm going to start by duplicate. Uh, no, let's not duplicate it yet. Let's just go to our Corona one. And we need to plug in the mask node. And in order to do that, we're going to need to have something for it to plug into. So let's uh, shift A, add a color mix to take this bottom layer. And we need to turn the alpha all the way down to zero. We'll make it black. Now we can add our input mask and from the drop down menu on our mask layer we're going to choose Corona 1. Just connect that to our um, viewer node. I'm going to drop into the top image our render layer. Now you see this horrible weird blackness and we're going to take our, max, uh, our mask and drop it into the factor and you can see where our mask is it's all black and our colors are all on the outside of the mask so we need to shift a color invert and just drop that onto the mask string and now all our flames are on the inside and that's what we want brilliant okay so before we go any further I'm going to drop in a color mix node shift a color color balance I'm not going to do anything with it just yet I'm going to wait until I've got everything connected and we can adjust it as we see fit but first let's connect select all these the shift D that duplicates them bring it down a bit so we can see what we're doing and I'm going to change that to layer corona 2 and change the mask to corona 2 also as soon as it um, updates there we go if I switch, hit the select the mix node it's updated that's ideal that's just what we want now we need to mix these two nodes together so shift a color mix drop those in together connect that to the viewer node and that's not what we wanted let's try that one on top that one underneath We'll change that to add. Always a problem, every time. Doesn't matter how many times you do it. Let's try multiply. Nope. Okay. So let's not use a mix node. Press X. Shift A, add color alpha over, drop that one and drop that one. Now let's see if we've done it. Yeah, there we go. That's done it, kind of. And hopefully those edges won't be a major problem. But now we need to come in and connect these to the main bulk of the scene. So press shift A, add a color alpha over once again and I want to drop that into the top slot 
this one now into the bottom slot. Let's see how that works. It's just compositing. There we go, that's looking beautiful. Almost. Almost. Uh, still having issues with these edges. We'll see if we can fix those in a moment. Because now I need to because now I need to bring in the background again. So it all looks prop all looks proper. And to do that I'm going to simply bring in a colour mix. Shift A, colour mix. I'm going to drop it behind everything and I'm going to turn the base colour into black let that composite through and oops I've done it slightly wrong I'm on the top I need to be in the bottom slot turn it to black let it composite and see how far we've done okay that's not too bad we still we have this issue with the uh, edges that the masks were supposed to get rid of so let's bring up our masks again shift a uh, control up arrow let's drag that up close down that window and turn that one to the image editor select the viewer node change it from view to mask uh, no change change the input to render result and I want corona 2 let's select those masks and let's just move our masks more central so they're away from the uh, bulk of the object trying to knock out these edges or reduce the obviousness slightly okay and to help it render a bit faster I'm going to select these glare nodes and just mute them by selecting and pressing M and that should help it composite a bit faster yep there we go okay let's go to our 3d view and with that plane selected I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode I'm going to select these two edges I'm just going to press G and bring them slightly away from the edges of the other plane G shift Y to lock the Y axis and just bring it up slightly there now go back to object mode and do the same with this one select these edges G shift Y just bring it down slightly make it narrow G shift Y okay that should help tab into object mode G shift Y just drag it up slightly same with that one G shift Y okay that should help Let's just render that quickly probably have to fix our masks again so let's go to our 3d view UV image editor choose Corona 2 yep and now you can see our masks are now outside of our layer completely so we need to fix those I'm just going to scroll in a bit move the edges of these masks in So we're not leaving ourselves with these horrible sharp edges. Just trying to fix these uh, creases in our mask. Now we can bring that side in. Bring that corner in. There we go. We'll just keep an eye on our mask there. Yeah, it's uh, still not happy with it. Let's bring this in. And this is kind of the problem we're going to get because Blender's masks aren't that good for this kind of work which is kind of disappointing because the a lot of development's gone into these masks and they should be ideal for what we're doing 
oops just tweak this constantly until we're happy with the result just pull that in I need to pull that in a lot okay that's looking somewhat better okay so now we've got that I want to uh, go back to 3d view and go back to the material setting and for each of the layers I'm going to add in some y direction animation and that will make the flames move and be a little bit more dynamic and look a lot more realistic so I need a timeline so if I split this window slightly and change it to a timeline on the final frame I'm going to click 0.5 for the Y direction press enter and I for the keyframe I'm going to do that for each plane Okay, that's all that done, and now um, I'm going to change my timeline back to 250 frames. Uh, yeah, 250. Press E on the keyboard to make that the end of the animation, and now I'm going to change my 3D view into a dark sheet and I'm going to select everything by right clicking on the top bar everything on frame 100 which is all our keyframes for our fire offset we've just done in this lesson and I'm going to press G and just drag them all the way out to match the keyframes of our main body Okay, so now that's done, let me just select our glare nodes, press M, and unmute those, and then we can render this out, and we should be golden now. Make sure the compositor is checked, so that we get all our render going on properly. Make sure all our scene layers are checked. Yep. Until then, let's save our work. File, save. Okay, now we're good to go. Let's hit the animation and I'll see you soon. Okay, so we've finished rendering that and it's compositing. You can see um, we've got a little bit of trouble with these edges. Um, let's bring up our final rendered image animation if I click the play rendered animation here in the toolbar we'll see what we've got and yeah that's that's not looking good is it that we've got these horrible horrible black bars going across our, our scene and it's just looking it's making the whole thing look thoroughly horrible yeah we can't be having that so how do we fix it well thankfully it's not too difficult let me just close this down uh, if we take a look at our alpha over node and while that should work, it's obviously causing us problems with the alpha values. So let's delete that. And we'll simply bring in a new mix node. Let's go full screen again. Control up arrow. Now if I mix these colour balance nodes into this mix node. And drop it into the final alpha over. And if we switch the blend type to screen and we'll just let that composite for a couple of minutes it's going to take a little bit of time just because the um, 
excuse me, the Glenord is busy doing its thing. Very busy doing its thing. Come on, make an effort. There we go, it's starting across now. And as you can see, all those horrible black lines have now gone. Our scene is looking good. But I think we can do a little bit more with these clouds while we're here. And I dropped these colour balance nodes in earlier, but then I didn't actually do anything with them. So we're going to use these now that we have the opportunity. And I'm just going to play around with the settings a little bit darken down the um, the lift value or the, the darker values and give a little bit of boost to the highlights in the gain I'll do that with both uh, both colors let's uh, let's knock out these glare nodes for a moment just press click them press M and that just mutes them which should uh, Running a lot smoother now. Yep, there we go. Now I think we've knocked it out a bit too much, so let's uh, bring the darks up a little. Yeah, let's push those highlights up a bit. Punch them down into the yellows ever so slightly. Yeah, we can see these big fiery gas balls here. This is looking quite good. Yeah, I'm liking the edges. Let's pull the uh, gain down a little. Lower the lift. Let's punch up the mid-tones. Oh yeah, that's a lot nicer. Pull it slightly into the yellows. Okay, I'm starting to quite like that, that effect. Let's push it a bit higher. Now I'm not liking the uh, darkness there. Push that up a bit. Now let's pull it up. Oops, no, that's horrible. I think we've gone too high with the gamma. Punch it back towards the white. See what little blue does. Uh, nothing nice. No, I don't like that. That's crazy. Okay, that's that's looking better. Yeah, I'm liking that a bit more. Okay. All right, we're doing okay with that now. That's looking a bit better. I just want to. Uh, I just want to play a little. I might undo this, so let's just uh, Shift D, duplicate that, and I'm going to. Oops, no, I want to keep them plugged in, but I'm going to essentially copy what's going on with that node. Uh, Shift A, color mix, and let's drop those two values into there. Now we'll see what craziness we can get from adding those two values together. We get a bit of a boost, I think. Not much. Let's try and multiply. That strangely cuts it down. Let's try divide. Oh, that's horrible. Let's try different blend mode, see if we can get anything interesting that that's killed it. Uh, let's try a saturation value. Oh, that's a little bit better. Kind of, kind of nice. I kind of like that. Let's just try one more. Uh, yeah, I'm not keen on that one. Let's try hue. Could turn it all green, that could be interesting. Now it's just gonna kill it a bit. Okay, well we tried. Last one. Okay, I can go with that. 
So it's control up arrow. I'm going to go back to my masks quickly. And I want to just bring them down a little. I want to get a little bit more of that flame a bit lower down. So it looks like it's coming off the surface of the planet a bit more. Okay. Oops. We're getting it now. It's all coming together. In the final few moments, I think that's it. We can't get better than that. Let's turn our glare nodes on again, select them, press M. Now you know how it's done, you can obviously add in more layers of these planes. And I think we're good, so I'm going to render it out one final time, and that will be the end of it. So, I'm ready. Ooh. Now we've got something going on with that glare node going in. Okay, I think I'm happy with that now, so let's get this animation out for its final render, and I will see you very shortly. And here we are with the final render, and it's not quite as good as the After Effects tutorial, but I think you'll be happy to get away with that in your sci-fi movie, just stick in a spaceship or two and bam, you're away. So yeah, I think that's all we have for this one. Of course, being Blendy, you can take it a few steps further. You can add the particle effects, obviously, and maybe add a few curves to drive those and mix it up a bit. Or you could have a go yourself and try and see what you can come up with with the different clouds textures, and then you can obviously jump into cycles and see what you come up with there with the new volumetrics could be interesting so give it a go have a play see what you think and don't forget you can post your results onto our facebook and google plus pages well i'll leave the links in the description or just drop us a line if you're watching this on the jam website and just leave a comment and if you want to see more of these videos, you can always subscribe and we'll be happy to have you on board. So, I think that's it for today. Until next time, uh, goodbye and we will find something equally interesting to play with. <laughs> Alright, bye for now.